my name is Ryan, and I'm going to be going over how to do inner and outer tie rods on a Mitsubishi Eclipse, a second gen DSM. Here are a few tools that I'm going to be using. The sizes may vary, but I have a 17mm socket, 22 and 21mm wrench, and a 13mm wrench. First thing I'm going to do is take the castle nut off of the outer tie rod. It's that easy if you have an impact. We'll be using our pickle fork and hammer. The pickle fork is a great tool to use if you're replacing the outer tie rod, but not very good if you're going to be reusing it because it tends to damage the boot and the ball joint. You would take the pickle fork and put it in between the steering knuckle and the outer tie rod end and hammer it and pry it out. You're going to want to put your wrenches on the outer tie rod end and the inner tie rod end and separate them from each other by loosening the tie rod end. The next step is relatively important if you want to have your alignment close to being within spec when you're done. When you take the tie rod end off, you're going to want to count the amount of turns it takes to come off and when you put the new one on, put it on the same amount of turns. So you would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, so about twelve and a half. So once you have the tie rod end off and the locking nut, you're going to want to take the clips for the tire, inner tie rod boot off. So I take that one off. And then generally there are ones on the inside, but whoever did mine last didn't decide to put those back on. So I don't have to worry about that. So now go ahead and just yank this boot off. And there's the inner tie rod. Next tool you're going to need is called an inner tie rod removal set. It kind of looks like a big mag flashlight and it has these little wrench ends that you put on the inner tie rod. As you can see the wrench end fits on the inner tie rod and this one is one inch and three sixteenths. You're going to stick the inner tie rod into the flashlight looking removal tool and lock it in to the wrench piece. You have that all locked on, you're going to take your half inch ratchet and put it in the end of the tool and loosen it. And that's the inner tie rod. Now I've got my new parts over here. I just ordered these off of Rock Autos and they're pretty cheap so we'll see how good the quality is. Now we're going to basically do the exact same thing except in reverse with these new ones. But since, like I said before, sizes vary, this new tie rod end inner, I guess, is 33.6 millimeters instead of the 1 and 13 sixteenths. So I put that on there and go ahead and tighten that onto the rack and pinion. Once we have the inner tie rod on there, we're going to want to torque it down. The torque specs are going to vary from car to car, but on these particular cars, it's 65 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and crank down on this. And there you go. That's torqued. So after you put your boot and locking nut on, you're going to want to go ahead and put the tie rod end back on. And put it on the same amount of turns as you took it off. So. Let's see if I can get it started. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and a half. And there you go. Then, once you have it in place, you're going to want to snug this nut down onto the tie rod end. And you'll put a wrench over here and on here and tighten those together. Next, 
just twist the tie rod end and stick it back into the steering knuckle. Get that castle nut on there and go ahead and torque it on there. The torque spec for this is 18 to 24 foot pounds, which doesn't seem like very much, but that's what this spec is, so that's what we'll do it to. And then make sure you get the keyway lined up with the hole and go ahead and stick a cotter pin in there because those are always good to use. Lastly, go ahead and put on your greaser and hit it with some grease if it has one. Once you do the one side, the other side should be faster, but sometimes things can be stuck and it's actually harder and takes longer, but not generally. And then after you finish both sides, the last thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and take it over to an alignment shop because your toe will most likely be out of spec even if you count the threads of the tie rod end. That's just how it goes. So you want to go ahead and at least get a front end alignment. And there you have it. That's inner tie rods and outer tie rods. Thanks for watching. One last thing you can do once you have your wheel back on. Let's check to see if there's any play now that you've replaced the inner and outer tie rod. So go ahead and give the tire a good shake. And no more play. If you happen to miss any of the torque specs or tools that I use throughout the video, go ahead and check out the description for all the tools that I used. And if you need any help, go ahead and leave your questions or concerns in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.